This sure has been a big year for me. Not only have I gone to school and graduated with a diploma in digital media, but I've also learned some great video production techniques, started a new series, partnered my channel with a multi-channel network, and my subscriber count has jumped from under 100 to over 500. But even with my studies, I've still managed to make reviews for 17 different games. So as per tradition with this channel, I'll be taking a look at my favorite games that I've played in 2014. Now, to clarify, these are my favorite games that I've played this year. That doesn't necessarily mean that these are all games that were released this year. In fact, I'll say right off the bat that half of the games on this list were not released this year. Yeah, I haven't been too impressed with the titles this year. Sorry. Also, if you don't see a game on this list that you liked, it doesn't mean that I didn't like it. It just means that it either wasn't one of my personal favorites, or more than likely, I still haven't had a chance to play it. And finally, I will be listing these games in the order in which I played them. So without further ado, let's get started with... Number 1 Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze A new DKC title, you say? A DKC title that implements new gameplay elements while keeping the challenge and style of the previous titles, you say? A DKC title that revolves around DKL becoming engulfed by a polar vortex, you say? Sold. Around the time when most people were still wondering if the Wii U was going to be successful, Nintendo released this platforming gem. A title that takes the core elements from previous DKC titles and adds new gameplay elements with absolutely brilliantly designed and beautiful levels. But if that wasn't enough, the composer from the original DKC titles, David Wise, reprised his role and created some extremely memorable tracks. Sure, this game could be a little tough at times, but if it wasn't, then I'd start to think Nintendo was going soft. This romp through fruity vines, autumn woodlands, and the savannah was a great excuse to go bananas all over again. And in the end, I see nothing wrong with that. Number 2 Earthbound You mean to tell me that Ness isn't originally from Super Smash Brothers? No. No, he is not. Where Ness does originate is this wacky JRPG that parodies American life in the mid-1990s with extremely dark humor and subtext. This game for me was a very interesting experience. I knew full well that this game was considered by many to be a masterpiece, and I also knew that there were very adult overtones and humor that was dark, if not downright black. After playing this game, I can safely say that this assessment was extremely accurate. But what stood out the most for me was in spite of the bizarre occurrences and somewhat depressing moments, this game showcased an extremely powerful message about growing up and the loss of innocence. Any game that can subtly portray such a message and never lose its sense of humor is downright amazing. Add in an extremely clever combat system, an amazing soundtrack, and some fun and very detailed graphics, then you have one title that I can recommend to almost anyone. Number 3 Super Mario 64 Yeah, 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 I know. I've played this game many times before, and this year is not exactly my first playthrough. But hey, I did play through this game in this year, and this is my list of favorites that I played this year, so... It's staying on the list. But hey, no matter when I played this game, I can always appreciate just how amazing this title was. The gameplay is extremely responsive, and to this day gives some platformers a run for their money. The visuals were downright groundbreaking, and create a very large, diverse, and downright magical world for players to explore. The soundtrack is so memorable that I've been whistling the tunes for the past 18 years and, above all else, this game took the standard Mario formula 
and dared to take it into an entirely different direction. This daring new direction laid the groundwork for many 3D games that were created afterward and revolutionized the gaming industry. For this reason, Super Mario 64 is not only one of my favorite games that I've played this year, but it's one of the best games I've ever played. Number 4 Mario Kart 8 The last Mario Kart that I've played before this one was Double Dash, so it would be completely understandable if I picked up this game and was completely lost. But, true to most of Nintendo's sequels, I became accustomed to this game as easily as hopping over a lazy Goomba. This game not only has 16 beautiful and clever new tracks, but it also remakes and modifies 16 classic maps from the previous entries. Furthermore, it adds a large amount of characters and vehicles, and grants the players new ways to frustrate the other racers, including an item that can finally destroy the bane of Mario Kart players' existence. But with the addition of DLC, I've gotten to see even more amazing tracks, and rediscover the joy of yet another Rainbow Road all over again. Some might say that this series is just a racing game for kids, but the kid in me says he doesn't much care what some might say. Number 5 The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past Yes, I have finally played through a 2D Zelda title. So, after traversing four of the 3D titles, just what is my assessment of this one? Well, I think it's great. It's not exactly my favorite, but I can definitely see how this title laid the groundwork for future Zelda titles with its extremely clever dungeon design, beautiful soundtrack, and outside-the-box style of enemies. But that's not all. The size of the map is massive, they dare to introduce a new villain, and amazingly, most of the dungeons can be completed in any order. At this point, I haven't seen a Legend of Zelda title that I didn't like, and unless this upcoming title is a massive disappointment, I highly doubt that I will. So, whether I'm sailing the open seas, struggling with my wolf self, or playing a conspicuously familiar flute, I know that I will be in for one amazing adventure. Number 6 The Wolf Among Us Oh, would you look at that, two years in a row. Yeah, I suppose you could consider this cheating, but I guess that's what happens when a game is stretched out over five episodes. But considering how much I enjoyed this series, I would very much be okay with five more episodes. This extremely clever murder mystery surrounding modern-day fairy tale characters made for some incredible set pieces, along with a very large amount of intrigue. But that's not all. This series also provided some very memorable characters, showed the true backstory of many fairy tales, and even had political commentary thrown in without being too overbearing. Oh, but that's not all. Just when I thought this series was going to have a straightforward ending, the writers over at Telltale threw in a last second twist, which could have multiple interpretations, and manages to change the perspective of every single event that took place. This brilliant writing is what makes me excited for the future of not only this series, but every single Telltale saga that is currently in circulation. Number 7 Shovel Knight A game that has you jumping on enemies' heads in a suit of armor while using a shovel as a pogo stick? Count me in. This title made by indie newcomers Yacht Club Games introduces a silly storyline while maintaining solid gameplay, very vibrant 8-bit graphics, and an extremely catchy soundtrack. But probably the most impressive feature of this game was its ability to do all of this while still maintaining its status as an homage to the platformers of the past. I had a blast learning DuckTales-esque gameplay techniques, 
and fighting Mega Man style bosses while listening to Castlevania theme music with graphics that are reminiscent of all of those titles combined. But even aside from the mass assault of nostalgia, the wacky and self-aware plot of this game is sure to provide mass amounts of entertainment to even casual gamers. Throw in challenging but still entertaining gameplay, and you have a game that can be enjoyed by virtually all generations of players. So while most companies are moving on to larger, more realistic looking games, this is one title that proves that chivalry is far from dead. Number 8 Valiant Hearts I was a bit hesitant when I first saw this game show up on the Xbox Live Arcade. As much as I don't like when people do this, I did judge this game solely on the screenshots, as it didn't look like more than a simple 2D puzzle title. On the other hand, that may be Ubisoft's fault for not posting more detailed pictures. But once I began playing this game, I realized that it was much more than what I had anticipated. This love letter to those who fought and suffered during the Great War was a fantastic tribute on the 100th anniversary of the conflict. As opposed to the majority of war titles I've played, this game humanized the main characters, NPCs, and even the enemies in a way that I've almost never seen before. Heck, even referring to the Germans as the enemies wouldn't be correct. These were all just people. Fathers, daughters, husbands, and sons. All forced into a conflict that they wanted no part of. They didn't care about treaties, alliances, or honor. They were fighting because they had to. Throw in beautiful, stylized graphics, rather clever gameplay, an extremely appropriate soundtrack, and a thought-provoking and heartbreaking storyline, and you have one of the most memorable war games that I have seen in a long time. Alright ladies and gents, just two more games left on this list, but before moving on, I only feel that it's right to take a look at one dishonorable mention this year. What game would that be? Don't act like you don't know. Sonic Boom. Some people felt that I was being a bit unfair in my review of this game. Personally, I feel that even playing this game from start to finish is being entirely too kind. But please try to understand my frustrations. I've seen the Sonic series go from a fan favorite all the way to nothing more than a joke among the industry. So, after seeing some Sonic titles over the years that weren't exactly amazing, but at least innovative and fresh, I was optimistic that maybe I'd see a revival of this once proud series. But then, I get this. This broken, unoriginal, and completely unfinished waste of my time. After the absolute disaster that was Sonic 06, you would think that any developer would know better than to attempt to rush out a title that is severely underpolished. It's downright unacceptable for Big Red Button to release such a game given this series' history. That is why I did not give this game a standard review. It doesn't matter whatsoever how the minuscule character development, new gameplay features, or different art style affected the game. This game broke any hope I have for this series, even with Sonic Team back at the helm. I sincerely hope that either Sega lets their flagship mascot die a graceful death, or makes one final attempt to make things better. Because the way I see it, the Sonic series of video games is officially dead. Number 9 Metro 2033 Redo I'm always fairly skeptical when a game gets either an HD remake or gets ported over to a new console. It's very easy just to re-release the exact same game with virtually no improvements and charge consumers full price. This game, however, does not do this. The much more clean and crisp graphics make this treacherous journey through a war-torn Moscow a hauntingly beautiful scene. Not to mention, 
many of the original bugs have been smoothed out, which makes combat a much less hair-pulling affair. But that's not all. There have also been modifications to the cutscenes, which make a much more powerful impact on the player. The DLC weapons from the first game even make a resurgence, and they threw in a few more gameplay elements to keep you on your toes. So even though this is just a remake of a four-year-old title, I still had a blast clawing my way through this post-apocalyptic story about life, death, and humanity. And finally, number 10. Super Smash Bros. I haven't played a Super Smash Bros. game since Melee. In fact, I hardly ever played the first game and played Brawl exactly once. So you could probably understand my nervousness when I first picked up this game. But, to my absolute delight, I placed the controller in my hand, began playing, and felt like I never stopped playing Melee in the first place. Not only are the controls extremely smooth and responsive, but this game boasts a massive roster, tons of new and classic maps to explore, new items, the ability to create maps and characters, the ability to modify existing characters, and new game modes. This has been a fantastic year for Nintendo, and it's games like this that definitely give them a distinctive edge. I'm nowhere near finished with this game, and if things continue like they are, I'll probably be playing this game for as long as I've been playing Melee. But, regardless of your character or playstyle, items or no items, Final Destination or Hyrule Castle, this is one game that will be enjoyed by almost anyone, for fun or glory. So, as this year winds down to a close, I would just like to thank you all for taking this journey with me, and I can't wait to see what 2015 has in store for us all. So until next year, this is E-Dog, and I'll see you next time.